Well, good evening, everyone. Good to see you back this evening. If you would, turn to Psalm 288. Psalm 288. If you would, stand with me as we sing, He Touched Me. Psalm 288. All together there on the first. <laughs> Psalm 290, a new name written down in glory. <laughs> Sing the 
That's Brother Gary Carpenter, if you would open us in a word of prayer this evening. Good evening, everyone. Glad that you're here tonight. And uh, I'd like to uh, give you some information. If this is the first time you've been in our services, if it, if it is, would you raise your hand so we can give you a packet of information about the church? Anyone at all? Don't see anyone this evening. All right. Anyone that did not receive a bulletin this morning or already this evening that needs one, would you raise your hand? All right, right there. Good. Good. Anyone else need a bulletin? All right, I don't see anyone. Thank you, gentlemen, for your uh, help there. <clears throat> All right, just a couple of uh, announcements <clears throat> uh, as we made this morning. Uh, there are still some uh, places, I think, that are uh, available to sign up for if you can help with the youth rally on Friday as far as food or supplies like that uh, uh, are involved. I, I imagine, right, Miss Julie? Actually, I think it's full. Was it full now? Don't you dare go out there and sign that thing. <laughs> if we have an overflow, somebody's got to eat that or drink or whatever. And so that is not allowed whatsoever. I feel like Moses saying, that's enough. No more. Don't bring anything else to build the tabernacle. I don't feel that way. So, <laughs> all right. Good. Thank you, Miss Julie, for, uh, for that. <clears throat> all right. Now, this morning it wasn't, right? Okay, good. Because this morning I thought I passed by and saw it was still had some places. Well, good job, y'all. Good job. Uh, men's work day uh, this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock. You see the announcement there in your bulletin. If uh, you can help and be a part of that with any of the uh, uh, yard type work that we're going to be doing, that would be a, a help. And uh, so uh, if you'll make note of that. And uh, also, you'll see the announcement there about the food baskets, any non-perishables that you can go ahead and bring for, uh, for those. I uh, uh, walked up here and still left that card. <clears throat> the uh, cards, the quarter cards, $5 worth of quarters for uh, children, the Lighthouse Children's <laughs> Home came this week. And so we put those out there and that will give us about six weeks to uh, prepare and uh, to turn those in uh, is what we're going to shoot for. Uh, so if you want to do that, I know some people like to, uh, to uh, uh, fill them up with a quarter. Some people just want to write a check towards that and that is fine as well. But uh, just to be a help to them this time of year as they try to help the children in their uh, various homes in, uh, I believe it is, five, maybe six different countries uh, right now. Also, the other way in which we put an insert in the bulletin uh, this morning, uh, if you purchase things by way of Amazon, uh, I've never heard of Amazon Smile, but uh, really, if there's anything techy that you're wanting to know, don't ask me because I probably don't know. But anyways, this is uh, a way in which you can order things online and uh, you can select 
Lighthouse Children's Home, uh, <clears throat> but make sure it's the Kosciuszko, Mississippi one. And then uh, a half a percent of your uh, purchase, Amazon will donate to uh, their children's home. And so it's just another way in which uh, we thought maybe it would be a, a help to them uh, during this time as people get ready to purchase things online for Christmas and that type of thing. So if you would uh, make yourself aware of that. Let's look at our memory verse tonight. <clears throat> we mentioned this morning that uh, this is a verse just to remind us of the uh, dangers of not being thankful as we turn our thoughts towards Thanksgiving in the month of November <clears throat> and how that uh, uh, an unthankful heart is just uh, really a heart that is the result of a rebellious heart and a, a prideful heart. But uh, if you look at the verse, you'll see that they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful so really, their, their heart wasn't turned towards God at all. And they, uh, they didn't even give God the glory that he deserved, much less were they thankful towards him for anything that he had done for them. So anyways, just a, a verse to, uh, to help us during this time of year as well. Let's say it together. <clears throat> Romans 1, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Romans 1, 21. All right. <clears throat> Let's have a word of prayer, and then Brother Andrew will lead us in our next song. Brother Lynn, would you lead us in thanking the Lord for uh, our offering, please? Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for just allowing us just to be here today. Lord, we especially want to pray for this offering, Lord, that has brought in money to further the work here. Yes. Lord, we especially even want to think about those that were mentioned on the prayer list. Lord, just continue to work there, those that have lost loved ones. Father, we pray that you just comfort them with all yes. that you can. Be with Brother Brian as he brings forth your word tonight. For your Give him the words that we need to hear. Thank you again for all that you do for us. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Brother Andrew. Let's stand with you once again. Song 293. Song 293. Since Jesus came into my heart. We'll sing the first, second, third, and last verses of Song 293. <clears throat> what a wonderful Thank you. 
294, Psalm 294, My Savior's Love. And we'll sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verses. Psalm 294, all together there on the first. I stand amazing the presence of Jesus the
master was preaching, judgment is coming. You better get ready and heed the warning. I too was crying. I knew I was dying. Forgive me, I prayed. And now I am saved because of the blood placed over the door. My sin debt is paid, I'm not afraid anymore. The Lamb has been slain, and now I am free. The sentence of death has passed over me, I now live in His love. Because of Brother Andrew and Mrs. Julie for that uh, for that song. <clears throat> Aren't you thankful that the sentence of death is passed? Yeah. That's not on us anymore. And uh, what a blessing! And it is because of the blood. That's right. That's the only reason that it is passed. Passed because of His blood. Yeah. Appreciate that song. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number three. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter number three. Mark chapter number three. <clears throat> As we uh, continue here in the series, going with the gospel. title of the message this evening is, Look Who's Coming to Jesus. Look Who's Coming to Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, if you found Mark 3, let's stand together, if you will. We'll begin reading in verse number 7. <clears throat> it says, But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumeum, uh, Idumea, and from beyond Jordan, and they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throne him. For he had heard many insomuch that uh, they pre uh, had healed many insomuch that they passed, pressed, tell you what, <laughs> really appreciate these new glasses. <clears throat> they help me to see clearly. But usually it's after I pass the word I messed up. Then I see it clearly. And then I'm like, that wasn't that word. So if there's a word that's out of sequence, Follow along in your Bible, and uh, you'll know what I'm really supposed to be saying here. Verse number 10. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Amen. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. We'll stop our, our end our reading there this evening. Uh, the <clears throat> verses to follow down through verse number 20 and 21 uh, <clears throat> will be the focus of our message next week. But uh, this, these verses uh, tonight uh, have their truth to be had and prepares us for that next section as well. All right. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for giving us the uh, strength and health to be back again this evening. We're thankful that uh, we aren't uh, 
laid up at home or in the hospital or nursing home and can't be here this evening. We, we don't ever want to just take that as a given. We want to thank you for that ability. May our time here tonight be uh, an encouragement to our heart that we would, uh, Lord, be uh, open to what you would have for us through your word. We love you. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for giving us your word so that we could uh, use it to be encouraged and strengthened in our life. And uh, Lord, just uh, so that our lives might bring glory to you. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Andrew, I was wondering if you were going to get a drink of water. I didn't see your bottle sitting over here. I thought, well, I guess we can share this cup if she wants to. But <clears throat> it just made you have my throat problems and I'd have your throat problems. We'd have been a mess. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, uh, the, the thrust and the, the thought of the message this evening <clears throat> and uh, even just the the title of it, Look Who's Coming to Jesus, is, uh, is uh, 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 just comes straight from these few verses. I mean, we didn't read compared to the length of verses that we read at other times. It's, it's a shorter passage. It's just six verses here. But it is good to see... In, uh, in the way the Lord has it for us here and, and has, uh, has it placed in Mark just in a, in a uh, strategic way that it helps us get a grasp of what we've seen so far and what's going to come because we know that the Lord's whole purpose of his life is to seek and to save that which was lost. That's his purpose. And when we look at Mark and see the, the very beginning of the book, it says, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this whole book is about reaching others and, and teaching others about Jesus Christ and, and, and uh, showing them the importance of the gospel. And if you, if you think about what we have looked at so far and the messages that we have have preached and, and the one we just came uh, off of in the first six verses last week here in chapter number three, you see that Jesus is already having an impact on the society around him. He is already, his, his <clears throat> we don't know, there's not a, a timeline given here as far as how far we are into his ministry as of yet. But we, we see that his ministry is already beginning to reach out and to touch people and to, to have a, a work in their life. <clears throat> and if you'll, if you'll uh, use your imagination with me this evening and uh, just uh, deal a little bit with geography. How many of you like geography maps and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I do too. Uh, that's probably why our son, he loves to look at maps and figure out where we're going. And, and he's my map reader when we go on, on trips and stuff. But uh, if, you'll, if you'll work with me a little bit on geography uh, tonight, we'll just see and, and, uh, and be able to uh, tell maybe a little bit better of the outreach that Jesus is already having by way of his ministry, just in the short amount of time that he's been involved in it already. If, if we can pretend like <clears throat> this, uh, this aisle way here is, is the, uh, you got a picture in your mind also, the, the map of Israel in that area. <clears throat> there is, uh, if, if that is north <clears throat> and this is south for uh, our purposes tonight, you think out there on the uh, at the first set of steps out by the driveway uh, parking parking lot is is uh, the little the little uh, uh, lake that's above uh, uh, the lake the Sea of Galilee 
It's, uh, Brother Joe, what's the name of that? Do you know the name of that little bitty? I, I heard that it was Lake Hula, but Hula, okay. So, Lake Hula. So that's what it's going to be. I might not be pronouncing it correct, but anyways, just for the sake of geography, we'll say, okay, Shane. So Lake Hula is out there by the parking lot at that first set of stairs. <clears throat> and then you come down to the foyer, and that'll be the, the Sea of Galilee. Okay, that'll be the Sea of Galilee. And then from the Sea of Galilee, you've got the Jordan River coming down through here. And, and we'll say that right here, right in front of the camera, is where the Dead Sea begins. And then the Dead Sea is, is ever so long, and, and then it ends, and then there's uh, more countryside down to the south. <clears throat> Up there at the, the uh, Sea of Galilee, there in the, in the foyer, if you picture that that's the Sea of Galilee, then, then over there at the windows, you follow me so far, there's these windows over here, is Capernaum, the city of Capernaum, right on the, on the uh, edge of the Sea of Galilee. And that's where the Lord is. He's at, the, at Capernaum. If you, if you come down south just a little bit from that, Nazareth, where Jesus is from, his hometown, Nazareth is right up there by the Sea of Galilee as well. Then you come down the Jordan River and you get down here to the you get down here to the head of the, uh, the north side of the Dead Sea, and you have Jerusalem over here, just a little ways. And just a little south of Jerusalem, you have Bethlehem. So that's the layout of, of the geography. And then over here is everything that is east of the, uh, the Jordan River. What uh, we're going to be looking at this evening is the spread and the impact that Jesus is already having and how far these people are coming just to see the Lord and to hear him preach and to watch him perform miracles and even desire for the Lord to, uh, to perform these miracles upon themselves. But the reason I lay this out for us is because when we, we find Jesus... And he's being baptized in the, in the Jordan River. <clears throat> More than likely, it's probably not too far south of the, uh, the Sea of Galilee there, where it comes out and flows down to the Dead Sea. Because Nazareth, Jesus' hometown, is right up there by it. And so he comes into his, his public ministry. And John the Baptist declares, Behold, the Son of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And, and God the Father speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And so he, he is baptized there in the Jordan. And his ministry starts there. And he has the 40 days in which he fasts. And the devil uh, presents him with temptations to uh, to try to tr uh, trick him uh, up or to to stop his influence upon uh, his purpose on being here <clears throat> upon the earth but after that he he moves up to the city of Capernaum and he calls four disciples who are they yep you're right I appreciate that whisper the whisper was right Peter and Andrew and James and John. They were all fishing. And they were all on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. And he calls them there. And, and the Lord doesn't just stop with calling them. Remember, he goes into Capernaum. And he preaches in the synagogue. And he teaches there. And, and the people are amazed. Wow, we have never had a person teach with such authority. And he is... He is teaching and he is <clears throat> preaching there in the synagogues and he's beginning to have an impact upon people and he is beginning to, to uh, touch their lives and his, his uh, uh, 
for lack of a better word, his popularity is spreading throughout the whole area of that of that part of the of, of Israel. And so he is healing people. <clears throat> he is he is preaching with authority. And you remember he even he even heals uh, Peter's mother-in-law. And after that, he is going to leave Capernaum. And his disciples are scratching their head and they're saying, Jesus, why are, why are you leaving? There are such a great number of people that are still wanting to, to come see you and to, to uh, be in your presence and to be healed. There's still more people here. Why are you leaving? But the Lord says, I need to go into other towns in Galilee. And Galilee is that, <clears throat> that whole section up there by the Sea of Galilee and, and Nazareth. Remember, he says... Uh, that he is of Nazareth of Galilee. So that is that whole section up there is Galilee. And all of this section down here by the Dead Sea and Jerusalem and Bethlehem, all of this is Judea. And so he is, he is having a, a, an impact on all of these cities up there in the, in the Galilean area. And he's still preaching. Now he has come back to Capernaum. And when we, when we even look, the last uh, few messages that we have preached here out of chapter number two, <clears throat> when he calls Levi, he's in Capernaum. And he is, he is, when he's eating with the publicans and sinners, he's in Capernaum. When he is preaching and, and uh, telling those that are listening, and especially the Pharisees, and he's preaching about the old wineskins and the new wineskins and the old cloth and the new cloth. And, and uh, preaching about the, the joy of having the bridegroom in their presence. When he's doing all of that, it's in Capernaum. And so he is, he is preaching and he's teaching and he's healing and he's presenting all of these new truths uh, to them. And now he, as we saw last week, he has preached once again in Capernaum. And he has entered the synagogue and the, the uh, uh, Pharisees have tried to trick him up. Remember last week we said that they were watching out of the corner of their eye. Watching just to see, is, is he going to come in and heal this man with the withered hand? And as soon as he does, boy, we're going to jump on him like white on rice. And we're going to accuse him of healing on the Sabbath. You remember that? Good. I knew that you were here. I just hope you remember. <laughs> but he, he heals them, that man. And uh, the Pharisees are all upset. And they're still uh, uh, beside themselves about this. And they go to the Herodians in verse number 6. They go to the Herodians with the intent of starting to make plans to destroy Jesus. In other words, they want to get rid of him. They want to take him out because of the way in which he is, he is coming into their world. He is, he is uh, upsetting their whole system of religion. He is... Uh, Teaching and, and preaching in a way to where he's ignoring all the pharisaical uh, ways of teaching and ways of life. And he is, he's upsetting the apple cart in, in Capernaum here. And, <clears throat> but there's still people that are wanting to see him. We read here in <clears throat> verse 7 and verse number 8. You see that as he was, <clears throat> he was is withdrawing himself from the synagogue where he had healed the man with the withered hand. He's withdrawing himself and his disciples into the Sea of Galilee, which is right there beside Capernaum. And they followed him. And it says a great <clears throat> multitude followed him. A great multitude followed him from Galilee. Where we say Galilee was? All of that area up in there where Jesus had been working. Where he's been preaching, where he's been healing people. They, there's people that know about him. And so great multitude are following him from there close by where he, where he is. Then it says <clears throat> from Judea. You remember down here is, is Judea. Down here in, in this area with Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Matter of fact, it even says 
there, was, there were some from Judea, this whole region. And then it specifically says, even from the capital there, from Jerusalem, from the, uh, from the religious capital, where they, where they, uh, they are, are <clears throat> there with them. And they, they are uh, uh, the religious center. It's an economic center. It's the main hub that there's even people coming from Jerusalem. <laughs> Then he says, from Idumea. Remember, Idumea is the place of the Edomites, the, the family of Esau. <clears throat> and at this particular time, the, the land of Edom or Idumea used to be, if, if this is, remember, this is the... Uh, the Dead Sea right here and Jordan River and, and up through there. What used to be Edom was right over here and through some different wars and displacement and all of that, the Edomites were shifted over to, over to this side, south of Judea. So this is a long ways from up there where the Lord is. There's a, there's a great distance here. But he doesn't stop at just going, even showing us that the Idumea, the ones down there in, in southern uh, part. But it says, from beyond Jordan. Well, that's everybody over here on this side. Now, this morning, y'all were the ones that were Israel and with no flies. Amen. Yeah, Amen. that was good. Now you're those that are beyond Jordan. You're not over here with the, uh, the rest of Israel. You're not over here in this section. You all tonight are the Israelites. And this morning you had flies. Tonight, I don't see any flies flying around. So you're good. You're, the, you're over here in the land of Israel. <clears throat> over here, you're on the, on the east side of Jordan. And he says, Mark is telling us here, that the fame... The, the testimony, if you will, of Jesus Christ and all that he's doing, all of his teaching and preaching and preaching with authority and healing of the sick and, and, uh, and all of that that he's doing, that has spread over to here, even into this area. But then he's not finished. He says in verse number eight as well, <clears throat> That they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude. Tyre and Sidon, remember Sea of Galilee out there and Capernaum in the foyer. Tyre and Sidon are even on past that little lake, Hula, that's out there by the steps and by the parking lot. Tyre is a little bit further uh, north of that on the uh, Mediterranean Sea area. And Sidon is even further north than that. What's Mark showing us here? Here's the Lord in Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee. And he is doing what he came to do and to reach people and tell them of, of, of uh, himself and what is to come. And he is healing those and ministering to their needs. And the, the testimony of his works are spreading. They're going out. A good ways north, a good ways south, and a good ways to the east. The only thing to the west is the Mediterranean Sea. But I would I would venture to say it's not it's not said here, but I would even venture to say as mobile as they were, even with the ships and that type of thing, that uh, the commerce that would come in, especially in Tyre and Sidon, the commerce that would come in, it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me, although it's not said, that the truth of Jesus and his teachings had spread even further than the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Why? Because that was God. That was God's plan. That was Jesus's whole purpose of coming to this earth is so that he could begin teaching and, and spreading these truths to the world because he came to seek and he came to save that, what, that which was lost. Look at the end of verse number eight. <clears throat> the 
then the verse number eight says <clears throat> that uh, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. You see why the, the Pharisees would hate him as much as they did? You see why they would want to put a stop to the spread of, of this new message that is being presented? Do you, do you understand why this turning uh, over of all of their teachings and all of their rules and all of their laws is causing such an upset in, uh, in their world that they want to bring an end to him. But you see, Jesus' uh, method and Jesus' uh, teachings and his purpose is to reach all mankind. Now, he's over here working in Israel. Do you know who's up in Tyre and Sidon and in many areas over east of the Jordan River in this section? And even some down into Edom or Idumea, you know, who are down there and who are a part of those groups? Gentiles. Gentiles are in these areas. We in us in we are in those areas. So the Lord's working with the Israelites. But you know as well as I do, although it's not, it's not, he hasn't sent the apostles out to these areas as of yet, but he's going to. His plan is to reach the Gentiles. Amen. And aren't we thankful? Yes. Aren't you thankful that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just the gospel of to the Israelites. Amen. The gospel to the Jews. No, the Lord in his work upon the earth and even in his sending forth of, of, of Paul and Barnabas and, and, uh, and Jesus, uh, his interaction with Paul and his salvation and, and then his going out to be a missionary and Peter even going to spread the gospel to the uh, Gentile world. Jesus had a plan, and he still has a plan today, that we are to reach the entire world with his truth Amen. of the gospel. Right. And although Jesus is working up there in Capernaum, and he's preaching there and talking to them and teaching them and working with them and healing them, and it is the Jewish people up there, his testimony is having an impact on the world around him. <clears throat> now we aren't to that particular section yet as far as following the, the book of Mark. But do you know what is between Galilee out there in the foyer and Judea here by the camera table? You know what's in between there? Samaria. Samaria, the place that the Jews hate. The place to where if they're going from up there at Nazareth and up there at Capernaum and up there in the northern region and there in Galilee, if they're going to come down here to Jerusalem and to be here in Judea, they would go around Samaria. Why? Because they hate Samaritans. Because they're half Jew and half Gentile. You know that the gospel, the truth of Jesus Christ's testimony is even, even being placed in Samaria. What's the Lord say when his disciples are wondering why in the world are we taking this road and going from there through Samaria to our destination. Why are we doing that? And he says, I must needs Amen. go through Samaria. Because there's a lady at the well that needs to know about the forgiveness that I will offer. She needs to know that her lifestyle in the past doesn't have to be a weight around her neck that will take her to death. It doesn't have to be that way because I offer forgiveness for that sins of the past. 
I offer the, the forgiveness for the sins of her present to where she's living with someone that's not even her, her husband. And I will forgive that just as well. That's his message. Do you ever, do you ever just stop and think sometimes <clears throat> of when you heard the gospel and when you, when you realized that you were a sinner, you accepted Christ as your savior. Do you ever go back and revisit that time to, to where the relief, the peace that comes by way of knowing that your sins will no longer, even as Brother Andrew and Miss Julie sang tonight, your, your sins are forgiven and that sentence of death is no longer over your head. Mm. That it is past. Amen. Why? Amen. Because Jesus Christ loved you enough to die on that old cross so that your sins could be forgiven. Amen. And it started... When he began his ministry up there. I began further than that. Before time began. Before the world was created. But upon earth. It started in that ministry up there. To where just by little and little. The news spread about Jesus Christ. And his, his uh, teachings. And his, his uh, uh, life. And his healing of these individuals. To where they would come to him. From all different distances to come see him because Amen. he had the answer that Amen. they needed. All right. Amen. And they come to him to receive healing. You say, well, Brother Brian, that doesn't seem like that is the right reason to come to the Lord. It's just so you can receive something from him. Truth be known, isn't that why you came? Right. You came to receive forgiveness. Yes. And no one else could provide that. Amen. You came to receive something that, that you could not get anywhere else. And that is the complete 100% full payment of your sin debt to be forever erased. And you could get it from no other one right. than Jesus right. Christ. Say, Brother Brian, they're coming to be healed. They're coming to... to, uh, to to, uh, to have their self, themselves healed or maybe a, a friend or someone else uh, that they know to bring them to, to be healed. But I'm so thankful that we also see here that the Lord never turned away anyone when all they were coming was to be healed of a physical ailment. He doesn't turn them away and say, hey, you're not coming to look at me uh, in, in realizing who I truly am. And so I tell you what, I'm going to, uh, going to reject you because you're not coming for the right reason. You know, people come to church for reasons other than wanting to know Christ all the time. They come to church or they come to, they come uh, uh, even on during the week. When it's not time for service, they'll come to the church because it is a place that is representative of the love of God. That's right. People who care about others. Amen. That's what they're doing with the Lord. They're coming to be healed of a physical need. They're coming with, it says, even with, uh, with plagues, multitudes. To where even in verse number nine, Jesus is, is telling the disciples, he's telling them, listen, have a boat ready in case the throng gets too much and they press upon us to where we have to get in the boat and push out a little ways from the, from the uh, bank so that I can still minister to them. But they, uh, I, again, you've got to picture this in your mind. The throng of people, the crowd of people is so great that they, they are wanting to be close to the Lord. And it's almost as if you can see them coming closer and closer and, and he's backing up and talking to some. And it says they're even, they just want to touch him. And they're getting closer and closer to the point to where 
there's nowhere else to go except the Sea of Galilee. He says, have a boat ready in case we need to, to, uh, to get into the boat and, uh, and away from the throng. Why? Because he's, he's running off and leaving the people? No, because he's still going to minister to them. He's still going to teach them. He's not running away, but he is, he is trying to make a, a, a possible uh, uh, exit, if you will, as far as, not the exit, but another uh, position from which to teach from. But he says that they, he healed many in so much that they pressed upon him just to touch him. As many had plagues. You look around our city, and you see many people that need the touch of Jesus, need to be introduced to Jesus. You see them everywhere, <clears throat> and sometimes they might come to you. Sometimes they might come to you at a gas station and say, hey, you have a couple of bucks you could spare me. They might approach you in the parking lot somewhere and say, uh, I was wondering, could, could you uh, give me a, a couple of dollars or, or do you have anything that you could give me at all that would, that would help me? I mean, have you had that happen to you? Okay. And you know what is easy to do with the old human heart? No, uh, and discount it. It's easy to do. Shannon and I, in the the last probably month, have saw have have seen two or or maybe three, but uh, I know at least two of the the folks that are panhandling out on the uh, side of the road, and we've watched them get out of vehicles that are a whole lot better than the vehicle I'm in and get out with their, with their backpack and their sign and they go and they sit down on the, on the curb <clears throat> and they ask for handouts. And you know what that is? Easy to see that and apply it to everyone. Isn't it? Or is it just your hard-hearted pastor? It's easy, isn't it? Amen. You know what? I look at you and I think of the way that this individual was doing it. And I don't believe that you have a need. We were over getting fuel the other day, a couple of weeks ago, with, uh, when, when Brother Ben and Becca were here. And it uh, just happened that, I guess it was Saturday, when we were getting back from the couples retreat. And I asked them, I said, you got time for me to just run by the gas station to fuel up before we continue on with the rest of the day? Yeah, sure, no problem. Pull into the gas station, and I'm, I'm standing out there fueling up the, the uh, church van. And I finish, and I'm getting ready to get into the van. And Brother Ben says, uh, Brother Brian, I think that individual's wanting you. He's calling you. I didn't hear him, didn't see him, matter of fact. I was in my box. I was in get fuel in the van box. And I had finished that and I was getting into my other box of take Brother Ben and Miss Becca to the missions house. And, and I, I jumped from one box to the other and I wasn't aware of what was going on. And he said, that individual wants you. So I got out of the van, went over and talked to him. And <clears throat> anyways, the long and short of it was he was just wanting prayer at that particular time. But you know what it's easy to think? When they're coming across the parking lot, and by the appearance you, you have an idea of, of uh, what they're doing, it's easy to think. I don't have time for this right now. 
I've got things to do. I've got some to-do things on my to-do list that still need, need to be checked off. And I don't have time for the interruption. I'm just being honest with you. Maybe you don't ever have that thought. Maybe to you, you never think that. But when I saw the individual and they were coming towards me, I was, my mind jumped to that thought of, man, I got to, I got to get going. How long is this going to take? And the Holy Spirit said, it doesn't matter. This is somebody that needs help. You know, the greatest help that any of them need is this. Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord had to remind me their physical need might just be a way in which they get in touch with knowing their spiritual need. But that's hard to remember sometimes, isn't it? Hard to remember when we're caught up in our daily goings on. It's hard to remember when maybe we have seen in in uh, other experiences, the, the fakeness of some. And we label that to all. It might be a phone call. Maybe from a, from a, from a family member or, or a friend that calls and says, Hey, have you got time to come over here and help me with this particular thing? Or... Hey, do you have, do you have uh, the finances to help me right now with, with some needs that I'm having? And it may not be like it is here at church to where we get phone calls regularly like that. It might be at your house or it might be somewhere where you're out and about. And a family member or a friend or a co-worker or someone that you go to school with says, Hey, can you help me right now? Can you be a, an assistance to me? I've got this. They might not, may not say, I've got this need. Or they might say, I've got some homework I need some help with. And you think, man, not right now. I don't have time to help you. Really, that homework might be an avenue to where homework turns into, I can help you with spiritual need. It might be on the job to where it's break time. And you're thinking, oh, good. I am exhausted today. It's break time. I'm going to sit down and just let my mind decompress a little bit here. And your coworker comes up and says, hey, can I talk to you about something right now? <clears throat> and in your mind, you're tempted to say, uh, not right now. I was just going to sit here for a little bit and, and relax. The Holy Spirit might remind you, take the time to help this person in need because their physical need might be bringing them to you, but their spiritual need is why the Lord is bringing them to you. Amen. Because the Lord's response all through these, this multitude of coming to him and, and, uh, and coming to him with needs and wanting to be healed and even the one coming with the unclean spirit and he falls down and, and cries, thou art the son of God. And the Lord tells him not to tell and to be silent right now because in the Lord's timing, it's not time for everything to be known and, and displayed. But the Lord takes time for these individuals he speaks to their and heals their physical need. You think the Lord just forgets about their spiritual need? No. That's still on his mind as well. But in a heart of compassion, he takes time for them. Have we taken time for those around us lately? Have, have you been faced with a condition or a situation even in your life that you wished you could have a do-over and think, oh, I wished I could be come in contact with that individual again because this time I would take the time 
to not only try to help with a physical need, but I could tell them how their spiritual need can be met. We're not perfect. Not one of us. Sometimes we let the opportunity to help others go by without any action on our part because we're busy, because we're skeptical, because we, for one reason or another, don't, don't want to take the time necessary at that moment to answer their call. I don't know about you. Maybe, maybe you've never, you've never done that, and the Lord's never had to convict you of, of giving the necessary attention to others. I don't know. But if He has, then let me remind you that the next time that opportunity comes before you. And God brings that person into your path that has a physical need and yet a spiritual need as well. You can respond in the right way. What's it take? It takes a heart like Christ that always had time for others. How's your heart tonight? How's your heart towards those that have searched you for needs that you might be able to help them with. If there's, if there's room for improvement in that area in your life, then I would encourage you tonight. Go to the Lord and say, Father, please help me to be always mindful of how I can be a help to others so that I can point them to you. You know, God will provide another opportunity for you. This time, if we responded in the wrong way last time, this time, we can respond the right way. Let's bow our heads together. Andrew's coming with the invitation song. <clears throat> and I would invite you during the invitation. If the Lord has spoken to you. If he has even brought to mind in your heart an opportunity that was missed. An opportunity that was passed by. He's bringing that to mind. If, if you're able to be around that same individual again, may I encourage you to do this? Take the time. Take, to, take the time to, if you can, meet the physical need. But even if you can't, tell them of the one who can meet their greatest need. Maybe you might say, Brother Brian, I haven't really had that kind of opportunity anytime recently. Then may I encourage you to do this? I encourage you to ask the Lord to open another opportunity for you so that you can tell them about Jesus Christ. Use it as a time of witnessing. Going out with, in your life, going out with the gospel. Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to 
Lord, help us to be sensitive and aware of those opportunities in our lives that pre present themselves to where we can meet the needs of others. Lord, that those would be opportunities that we just wouldn't meet a physical need, but we would tell them about Jesus Christ, His love, and the payment that He's provided for their sins. Lord, help us to be mindful, to be witnesses for you. We pray these things in Jesus' name and ask your will to be done tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing with Brother Andrew at the invitation tonight. The Lord's dealing with your heart, speaking to you. Answer his call this evening. Andrew. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Jude said, having compassion, making a difference. And may that be our, maybe, may that be our desire, is uh, not just to have compassion, but to make a difference for the Lord's sake out of that heart of compassion. All right, let's have a word of prayer. And uh, Brother Andrew will lead us in the course for tonight. Family of God. Family of God. Okay. Good deal. Brother Jimmy Shoemake, would you pray for us, please, sir? I'm so glad
a blessed week. You are dismissed.